Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you, um, everyone, to uh, to be uh, to be uh, in this uh, in this conference this morning, this afternoon. I'm not sure uh, for uh, for uh, for all of you uh, wherever you are. And um, we're just gonna I'm gonna take you through a bit of um, ideas uh, related to uh, to sports and technology. So we're gonna make a, a point about the situation overall, try to give you a bit of, uh, of insights in the market. And, and also, of course, uh, talk about the opportunities which are numerous in this field. Um, this is a, a fast growing um, industry right now. So we're gonna talk about the opportunities. And, and by the way, not just in terms of, of business, but also in terms of more um, the social impact that sports can have and technology can definitely support that. And, and we'll finish by, um, by analyzing a couple of, uh, of case studies. Actually, these are, are companies that um, I co-founded with Pedro, by the way, Pedro is here. Hello, Pedro. Um, so um, we, we talk about these, um, these, uh, these um, uh, case studies as well, which, uh, which are good example of, uh, of what we're gonna talk about now. So um, I'm gonna share with you um, a, a quick presentation. Um, so what? Let me check if it works. Okay. Okay, should be with you in a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it should be okay now. All right. All right. So very quickly, uh, just going to introduce myself as well quickly. So I'm the guy on the on the left, actually, uh, too many years ago. Um, so I, my background is both uh, science and, and business. I got a chance to, to study uh, in, in France and, and in the US. And um, uh, I also um, uh, work for a corporation. Uh, my background is more uh, um, Procter & Gamble, uh, Total Fina, uh, Ferrari. I work for Head as well, uh, the leading racket sports manufacturer. And um, a few years ago, 12 years ago, actually just before the crisis, I started being an entrepreneur. So uh, it was not really a good time to, to start, but that was uh, one of the crises. We have another one right now, but anyway, we are used to that. Um, so um, up and downs, uh, but I get a couple of good hits as well. And four or five years ago, I started investing and, and, and being an entrepreneur in sports and technology, which I, I strongly believe in. Um, sports, it's not, uh, it, it's not a casualty for me. It's, it's something that I, I practice since the beginning. I, I believe sports taught me so much in my life. That's also why I want to invest in sports and chance as well to play on the, on the tour a bit. So on the ATP tour, I get a couple of, uh, of, uh, of uh, ATP tennis point, which is the professional circuit. So I get the chance to, to really have a 360 understanding of the sports, not just the business side, but also um, this, uh, this player side. And um, this first slide is all about uh, looking at this boy. Actually, I, I was wondering if, if, if I was this seven years old today, would I really play tennis? And the thing is that probably not, unfortunately, because uh, what we've seen is that technology has impacted our society in a wide extent. Um, everything has changed. The way we consume leisure today has really changed. But, um, not really uh, uh, in sports. In sports, this is still the same thing. For example, as I'm a tennis player, if I would like to, for example, find a partner uh, to play tennis today, even with all the technologies we have and the communities and the online things, it would be very, very difficult for me to find someone. So it shows you that the technology uh, didn't really impact sports at the grassroots level. So there's a big difference there as well. I'm not talking about the professional level, I'm talking about you and I, I'm talking about normal players. And actually that's, um, that's a big thing uh, because we're talking about a huge market. We're talking about actually uh, uh, the largest consumer ecosystem in the world. Uh, we're talking about 3.3 billion athletes so that's almost half of the population, and it's untapped. So looking about opportunities in the sports industry, you, you see uh, what I'm talking about. This huge untapped market there uh, that, that needs services. Um, sports and technology, um, I don't want to give you too many figures, and I'll try to, to, to be fast, but just for you to understand that uh, the total sports market is about half a trillion, and, and many people think it's going to be a multi-trillion 
market very soon now, impulsed by technology. But still, sports and technology is very small. It's, it's 10 billion compared to the overall sports market. But it's a fast-growing segment. It's a 20% growth right now, and it keeps accelerating. While the growth of the market uh, of sports in general is only 5%. So it's growing four times faster than the sports market. So let's have a look at where that, where, um, which sport have benefited most, most from, the, uh, uh, from the technology. Uh, so uh, most of sports are, are, are low uh, because basically the, the innovation and technology has actually impacted. And it's not a surprise either that basketball is probably the one. The NBA has been pioneer in, in using the latest technology. I know some great startups as well working in baseball right now. So there's a lot of things going on, but so far, once again, it hasn't really reached um, uh, the sports. Um, another, another data here is more about um, the different segments of technology where um, that has been uh, used um, for, for sports. And you can see it's pretty, pretty much spread across the different areas. So there is no big uh, leader there. Of course, media and content-related platform leads the way. But really, technology has been, has been used. Many technologies have been used. I think the, the most important thing um, in, this, uh, in this chart is more about the, the, the data that is really, uh, uh, as I'm writing here, the engine. Uh, all these verticals. Data is probably the common uh, denominator uh, factor of all these. So they all need data, which makes data, uh, there again, a huge, huge opportunity. Data in sports, uh, it, it really once again um, fuel all these verticals. So other, other, other interesting point there is to, to talk about the technologies that are hot in the market. So of course, AI, I guess it's, it's everywhere. Um, for example, we can, since we talk about the NBA and the basketball, well, uh, you probably noticed that the, the game has changed uh, quite, uh, quite fast right now uh, because people are shooting more at three points. The way uh, the, the club plays is all based on data analysis. And just because 60%, um, for example, if you have 60% of three points, 50% success rate at three points is better than 80% success rate at two points. So it, it imports really a change in the way uh, the game is played. Uh, so it's also VR, another interesting, of course, uh, technology quite used with the confinement right now and we don't know what's going to happen with sports. You can imagine maybe some stadium will be empty. So virtual reality would help to broadcast a better uh, experience uh, to the consumer, to the viewers by, uh, you know, uh, creating all kind of virtual um, graphics in there and making more uh, like a normal match, right? But it's also um, um, the blockchain. Uh, that's another technology. So we'll come back to blockchain because actually one of the, um, one of the uh, case studies is really about the blockchain. So we can talk about this technology later, but of course, it's one of the major technology disrupting many, many industries, and it also disrupts, and it's also going to disrupt, sorry, uh, the sports industry. And IoT, of course, all kind of connected objects. Um, we mentioned about the, the data. So, um, so of course, um, it's, it's also super important uh, to, to get the devices that are connected that brings this data. So IoT is also quite a focus. One of the use cases also about IoT, we'll uh, come back to this later. Um, okay, so just to, to, to summarize a bit in terms of, um, of opportunities we, we've seen here, um, there's probably um, grassroots sports, as I mentioned, once again, not just tap into the fans and into the uh, professional sports, but to tap in grassroots sports because this is really the opportunity to be almost the, the, the first there, uh, tapping and building the community of sports. Um, Second, very interesting point I think, um, in terms of opportunities as an entrepreneur or an investor or whatever uh, is, is new bundles um, in linked to the sports industry. Uh, you know that, I mean, most of industries are already uh, started their transformation. Uh, it's the story of Uber's and WhatsApp and Apple's of this world. 
um, it's the story of, of pipeline business model versus more the platform business models. Well, this is not existing in sports right now. Uh, the Netflix, for example, of sports doesn't exist. The Uber of sports doesn't exist. So, so that's there uh, an opportunity in terms of uh, adapting, uh, creating these new models in the sports um, industry. And the other thing is, is about new products because the whole technology um, unleash a lot of opportunities in this field. For example, we can think of um, digital collectibles that could be a new product. And I think we really have to think in terms of, of new uh, streams of revenue, of income uh, for clubs, for the whole industry, especially now that we have um, uh, this crisis, definitely we need to be creative and find new ways of monetizing new sources of income. So new products through the digital can be, uh, can be as well uh, quite an opportunity. There will be a lot of, of new things coming. And the last thing I would say is also in terms of, of, of new things is, is to create a new category. For example, um, I mean, I, I mentioned here a bit the word of singularity because this has a, a bit this idea, you know, that the ever accelerating progress of technology uh, which uh, will, will change completely the game and will make uh, humanity as we've known it uh, probably uh, to, to stop. Uh, it's not going to continue the same way at least. And it's a bit the same with sport because sport is definitely linked to, uh, to humanity. It's really a part of it. So we can imagine that sports as well going to be changed drastically. It's not going to stop, but it's, it might start uh, in a completely new form, in a completely new way. And that's maybe what we see with esports that represents a huge um, category within the industry already. It's absolutely huge, the fan, the community around it. And of course, it's all uh, digitized. So it's, it's, it's also offering a lot of, uh, of opportunities uh, uh, to the consumers, uh, far more gamification, et cetera. So that's, that's super interesting. But I wouldn't consider it a sport. I think it's already a new category. So that's also an opportunity. The data, I mentioned the opportunity around data, everything that is around data is important, but data comes with the community. Because when we talk about data, uh, if you want to monetize data, of course, it needs to be big data, it is data in big amount and also quality data. So it comes with the community with, and with a certain unification. That's what data and community for me, probably the biggest opportunity in the market, but they come together. I, I do believe there is absolutely a historical opportunity in, in really bringing the industry of sports together and building that community that we've missed until now and create uh, finally an architecture. You know, once we do that, uh, the possibilities and the opportunities are absolutely infinite. There's gonna be a constant flow of, of product that, that come on that universal uh, architecture for sports. So that's, that's probably a big area of investigation and, and, and of opportunities. Well, that's for the business opportunities. But of course, looking at sports, it's, it's, it's far more at stake uh, than business, to be honest, because if technology can impact sports and help sports to be uh, much more mainstream and to bring more people to practice sports, at the end, what is at stake is also part of, of, of humanity in a way. Uh, we know how much sport can impact society, how it is important for us. In my personal example, I know what sports taught me and even if I get the chance to, to get in, in great universities, even Harvard, but I, I really believe my experience as a professional tennis player and, and not even as a professional, but practicing to all these values that we need. And this is really something at stake. Taking care of each other is definitely uh, one of the, the key things for us in the future. And we can see that once again uh, right now with the situation. We all depend on each other and our individual behaviors as well are important. So uh, there is a big thing there. Uh, in terms of education, uh, Jack Ma as well, the founder of, um, of Alibaba, says something interesting about education. He said that he would probably invest into education in terms of soft skills. He thinks that's the future of education, soft skills. In other words, art, sports. Because once again, this is how you learn how to take care of each other, because probably AI, uh, that is growing so fast will will change the game for us. So I don't know what we're going to have left as human, but probably to take care uh, of each other once again and 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 to enjoy these soft skills. Probably robots can compete in this area. 
definitely sports industry should lead the sustainability as well um, uh, movements and and because of this value sport have a big uh, a big opportunity there as well to be a leader and to drive uh, this um, <coughs> These, um, these uh, beautiful initiatives that are that are now uh, happening regarding sustainability. So that's a bit the, the opportunities uh, in the market. Let me now talk to you about uh, two uh, two case studies. So uh, these are our companies I'm uh, founded uh, with uh, with uh, with Pedro, who is here. We are co-founders. Um, this is a good example. This sentence from uh, from Saint Exupéry from the Petit Prince. It's a good example. I think it represents what we're building. Um, as for the future, your task is not to force it, it is to enable it. And that's what we're doing. That's a bit the idea we mentioned before in terms of building um, an infrastructure for everyone so that you can build on top of this and the other can create this future. We are building the infrastructure. So this is a quick um, uh, overview of, of the Olympia ecosystem. So the heart, of course, is Olympia Care, which are the values that, that animates us to create the whole thing. It really uh, in our DNA, I would see because the decisions of the company and the strategic decisions are, are really uh, nourished by this Olympia Care. So in the Olympia Care, we have a lot of, of initiatives regarding sustainability, education, and of course the promotion of the, the values of sports. Um, so then the other level is really um, the base of, of our infrastructure, which is a decentralized uh, database for sports. So basically, what we're doing is aggregating all the data from all platforms, uh, whether the institutional, whether the private. We're aggregating all this data and building a massive amount of data that aims to be absolutely universal. We want it to be the database for sports and decentralized for many reasons. Because since we're building an ecosystem, of course, uh, the blockchain technology. I'm not going to spend time explaining the blockchain technology, but if you, if you don't know it so much, one thing you need to remember is that it brings trust within an ecosystem like this, which is a digital environment. It brings trust. It allows you to transfer value. And, and that's what we need because many competitors will participate and are currently participating into this ecosystem. So if you want to have a common database, you need to make sure that everybody can trust each other. And that's what blockchain does. So that's why our database is based on the blockchain and it's centralized. Um, in terms of the other level is the standards. Standards are, are pillars as well of our, of our uh, architecture because it's, they are really uh, uh, what we need in the industry. Without standards, no industry can be scalable. And that's why st these standards can really build a more unified world of sports. So when I talk about standards, for example, I talk about the universal ID, which is quite central. We have one ID for passport for sport where all your data are stuck but also you control this id you control this data you control who you want to give access to that's the beauty of decentralization as well you will be you will have the power on your data okay so that's universal id we really want to establish it as the passport for all people practicing sports in the world it's really something is an activity index as well could be very useful to compare the different level of activity that people. Um, we are working with governments already in regards to create programs for cities uh, to, to make people more active and to gamify a bit the whole thing. We can think about a universal level for each sport so that people in different uh, regions, different geographies can understand each other when they talk about their level in one sport. Since we have the data aggregated in one place, we can easily create a standard so that once again, um, the level is understood commonly in the same way everywhere. And the last standard I will mention is the currency. So there again, on this standard, other can build many products. On the currency, I mentioned the, the crypto collectibles, for example, for sports athletes. It would allow as well young uh, players, young athletes to, to get financed. Why not to create a currency for them? They can create it easily and then start selling and start financing their career. Etc. Etc. We can even think about a bank of sports, and in, in nowadays with the issue with the, the virus and the crisis that is over our heads right now, probably to have more flexibility in the monetary system would help a lot. If we had a currency for the ecosystem, probably it can help companies as well 
because it's an ecosystem to start reactivating the pump. So these are kind of the, the standards we're creating, the pillars of the new world of sports more uh, united we, we want to see. And then there are data providers, service providers. So it could be smart devices. We're going to see a great example with Olympic, uh, which has a very, very um, singular and unique uh, model. Uh, but all these kind of service providers can be on top and can uh, basically data, but also receive and benefit from all the standards we are creating and make their business more scalable and, and better and create better service. And then, of course, all the athletes. So I will pass on the, on the video because I think uh, I, will, I will pass this one. I think uh, we don't have uh, too much time. So I prefer to, to up. If I go up now. Can, can I do that? Doesn't want to pass. Uh, hold on just one sec. Okay, we we'll go to the next slide. Okay, so let me explain you a bit more about Olympic. So I told you about Olympia, which is this uh, base infrastructure. And Olympic is one of the um, actual data uh, providers, I would say, service uh, provider uh, to the community of sports. Uh, so Olympic is, the idea of Olympic is really to build intelligent hardwares uh, and to create there again the community through this uh, community of, of the model. Olympic. Olympic. Ol Olympic. Olympic, yeah. Olympic. It's, it's, it's written there. I, I think you can see my screen, right? So you, you probably see it here, Olympic. So... Um, so the idea is really about that, creating intelligence hardware, hardware uh, that will um, create as well a community at the same time around sports, around the values of sports. But there's also a very interesting model since, as I mentioned, uh, we need to bring the experience of sports to another level. And bringing gamification, for example, uh, rewarding people for being more active is very important because we believe that um, people practicing sports they tend to take more care of themselves. So they tend to take more care of their environment, to take care of the others as well. So that's really something we want to reward. And we believe that society and the industry must reward the, the good behaviors in a way. So, so that's the way we do with these hardwares. People basically will be able to uh, earn and to get kind of, and to create alternate value that they can use within the ecosystem or even in cryptocurrency that could be uh, exchanged. So let me show you a quick video that explains it all and, and the model of Olympic. Daily aerobic exercise improves health, increases lung capacity, lowers blood pressure, improves the circulatory system, and more. But it can be hard to maintain a workout routine when our jobs, children, tiredness, and leisure keep pulling us in different directions. It's time to get back on track. Introducing the Exercise Reward Program from Olympia. Improve your overall health with this easy-to-use fitness incentive plan. Become an O-Dreamer today. You can earn Olympic reward points simply by completing your daily exercise goals. Then redeem your points for sporting goods, event tickets, and more. Even cryptocurrency. Here's how you join. Just download and install the Olympic Club app. Then complete the registration. Next, <laughs> the Peon smartwatch through the app. Activate it and enjoy three months of membership for free. There are two ways for O Dreamers to earn reward points individual mode and captive mode. In individual mode, you can check your performance and reward points on the Bayon smartwatch or the Olympic app. In captain mode, you can become a captain by inviting friends to join your team. Just send them an invitation code. The more O Dreamers you recruit to your team who complete their daily goals, the more points you can earn as a you can also boost your point total for either mode, individual or captive, through United Power. 
The Olympic Club has a daily reward point pool, and the more O Dreamers who complete the daily goal increases your United Power, which increases everyone's point total. To redeem your points for rewards, simply open up the Sports Mall on the app and select from a variety of products. Maximize your exercise potential today. Become an O Dreamer and watch the rewards roll in. Olympic powerful program that empowers sport lovers. Okay, so I'm gonna get to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that was a bit of an explanation of, of Olympic and, and, and what it does uh, and the model as well of Olympic once again, rewarding people for participating, for playing more, for being more active. And, and not just for winning, I would say. So that's, that's, that's the, the thing about, about Olympic as well, about from building the, the community. So the takeaway messages I would say today are, um, of course, that sports and technology is a fast growing industry. And once again, one thing is to remember the, the ecosystem. This is really the largest um, uh, ecosystem of consumers in the world. Um, the different business opportunities we, we talk that are really historical. This is really at that time. We are at the beginning of a big, big, big boost in these areas. So this is the moment um, right now. And um, definitely I, I, I take this sports and technology as an opportunity to, to build a fairer world uh, and a more sustainable world as well through sports. So that's, that's a bit the, the three things uh, that for me are very important and I wanted to, to share with you today. So uh, let me, uh, boom, boom, boom. Um, just uh, stop sharing. Okay, so maybe we have a, a couple of minutes. I don't know if you guys get, uh, get questions, sorry, because I've been uh, speaking all the time, but uh, yeah, if you have questions or, or anything you would like to, to talk about regarding the presentation or sports and technology in general or sports, whatever, 